everyone, I'm Sarah. And I'm Jesse. And we are the, the Chase, Chase Clan. Clan. So today is our very first Q&A Monday. We asked for questions yesterday and we got some really, really good ones. So we're excited to talk about it today. Yeah? Right. So I think we're just going to jump right in. This question was asked in a couple of different ways. So I just morphed it into one question. How do we keep things interesting? How do we keep a variety? Especially when you have time crunches. We are going to share a bunch of links below to some of our favorite recipe blogs and cookbooks and things like that where we get ideas to keep up the variety. Experimenting. It's the way I grew up pretty much. Um, I learned mostly from watching my mom and experimenting was something she did a lot. Just mm -hmm. different herbs and seasonings, flavor combinations. What does this taste like? Oh, maybe it tastes good with this. <laughs> he is very good at experimenting. I am getting a little bit better. I'll be like, hey, if we mix these two things, would it maybe taste like this? Um, and he'll be like, yeah, I think it would. Or he'll be like, no, honey, that's, that would work. So <laughs> so let's try this instead. We love to try exotic fruits and things like that, um, like for snacks and different vegetables and different mixes. Um, but the big one is recipes. Find some blogs that you love, some cookbooks that you love. Again, we'll share it in the description below, some of our favorites. And don't be afraid to try some of them. Some of them take a lot more prep, like when you make your vegan lasagna. Um, no. It takes forever. Long time. Forever. <laughs> so save those for the days. We have a lot of time to cook. Um, but for the shorter days, there are a lot of options that are just chop it up, throw it in the pan, mix it with things. Really simple stuff. A good place to find interesting new stuff to try is if you have an Asian food market. Yes. That serves produce. Yes, yes, yes. Asian food market has tons and tons of different things. Um, market Basket is even gotten a up on their stuff. Um, you can find super cool stuff at Whole Foods. Um, and you know, if the day is really wearing on you and you seriously just want to throw something in the pot while you're cleaning up the kitchen or whatever, spaghetti. Spaghetti and sauce. Guess spaghetti what? Without meatballs, it. it's vegan. Surprise, <laughs> vegan. Um, pierogies, if you get certain ones. We found some that were. We found vegan pierogies at Market Basket. So that was fun. <laughs> They're super good. But one of the things I really like to do um, when things are getting busier is we'll take a prep chunk of time to chop up vegetables that we use in a lot of recipes, like mushrooms, onions, peppers. Um, chop them up, put them in individual containers, and then freeze them. So that way on your busy day when you're, you know, making a stir fry or whatever it is that you're making, all you have to do is take it out of the freezer, it's already chopped, throw it in and it's ready to cook. Mm. Um, there's also things like slow cooking, you know, if you're home during the day, but dinner time is going to be a crunch. Um, you know, kids get off the bus and you just have a few minutes before sports or other activities. You know, it can slow cook all day. There are tons of slow cooked vegan recipes. And there's, there's just a lot. So if you look around, you will find your variety. And if you kind of plan around things, you can find a lot of stuff that's pretty quick. I mean, he does. He gets home at 5.30. Rough. Dinner's generally done between 6, 6.15 um, if he's cooking, which is the norm, mm -hmm. as, as you will learn. So find resources you love. Meal planning helps too. Prep ahead of time when you can. And that's pretty much what we do. Oh, an experiment. Don't be afraid to try new things. On to the next question. What do you miss about animal products? And we get asked this a lot. A lot. A lot. And the answer was even surprising to me. I don't miss anything. Not a bit. Not a bit. I thought I would. I thought I would miss cheese. I thought I would miss, you know, dairy coffee creamer. I thought I would miss certain meat products. Um, I really don't. And that's, that's the full honest truth. And it's funny, over time, as your palate changes, um, the thought of these certain things, they kind of make you ill. Um, for the most part. I know this isn't true for everybody, but at least for us. And we don't miss things like cheese. I know somebody asked about cheese. So this is kind of another joint question. Um, you know, we were big cheese eaters, big dairy eaters. Um, when it comes to actual cow dairy... Now that I'm looking back at a lot of the illnesses that I had, a lot of the symptoms I had consistently, um, I'm pretty sure I had a, a dairy intolerance and just did not know. This had to do with my sinuses. This had to do with inflammation of old um, injuries and for my monthly cycle and digestion. And 
I don't want to feel all of those things all the time. And that is what, as I was transitioning and getting used to being vegan, that is what kept me vegan was not feeling those things anymore um, and feeling really healthy. So. I did miss cheese at first. Mm. I mean, I did have a hard time going fully vegan. There are certain things that just aren't the same without that cheese-like flavor. Mm. You know, um, occasionally I'll make a tofu scramble breakfast wrap and you don't really need the cheese, but I don't know, just home fries, tofu scrambles, and a little bit of cheese, fake cheese, it actually makes a whole world of a difference. But you don't need real cheese. Right. There are so many options out there now. You know, a long time ago, it might have been harder mm. to find vegan alternatives. Um, if you're in a pinch, there's Jaya shredded cheese. It's okay. It's it's not bad. I mean, it is it's processed okay. food, but they don't have, like, tons of junk in it either. But if you're buying shredded cheese, that's also heavily processed. Um, so if that's the flavor you're kind of used to, it's really not much of a difference. No. Uh, tree line. Ugh. Creamy, like, cheese spread. It's made it's like from a, almonds. Like a pub cheese. It is incredible. It is so creamy and so delicious and amazing and you just put it on crackers and I'm sure we could find other uses for it but no, for now sure. we've been putting it on crackers and it's so so good like no <laughs> it's probably one of the best vegan cheeses we found so far Jesse makes this really incredible cashew cheese um it's like a spread it's like a spread sauce or a sauce we put it in things like alfredo it's good for it alfredo. all depends on what you put in with it so you can make an alfredo with it he puts it on pizza, and it's like this creamy, delicious, amazing pizza. I eat way too much of it every single time. It's <laughs> it makes filling. it. It's so filling, but it is so, so delicious. Um, we also have a recipe for vegan macaroni and cheese. You know, you just use things like non-dairy milks. Nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a big one. A touch of mustard. I mean, it's really simple. We have one on the Chase Clan blog, which we will be posting below. But there are a ton of variations for this recipe out there. So when it comes to animal products, there's really not anything that we miss anymore. We're two years in. We have a ton of variety. Our food is full of flavor and really filling. And there's really nothing to miss um, for us. One thing I do miss mm -hmm. is not having to check labels. Oh my gosh, yes. That... <laughs> The more whole foods you eat and the more you prep your own food, you won't have to do this. But even things like crackers can have milk. Bread can have milk. Um, so we have to read labels like crazy, especially when we first started and we didn't know which brands we could go to and which ones we really could not. Um, a lot of brands now are starting to have that little V stamp. So we always look for that first. And if not, we have to go through the laundry list of ingredients. But, I mean, if the list is like this long, I don't really want to be buying it anyway. So this is another great question and something that we had to get used to um, as we transitioned. How do you handle eating out? When friends invite us out or we're on vacation or anytime you want to go out to a restaurant, what do you do? This was something we had to learn as we went. If it's just us as a family, we will automatically choose to go to either Willows and Concord. They're fully vegan. We can order anything. And amazing. They're amazing. And their lasagna, I had to keep reminding myself that I was in a vegan restaurant because it tasted that good. <laughs> so close. So close to the original. Um, so we'll either go to Willows and Concord or we'll go to Raw Life in Tilton. Um, they both have different like off hours, so it really depends on who's open and what time we plan on going. Um, but both are vegan. We don't have to ask about things. We can just go in and order and it's really simple for us. Um, if we're invited somewhere with friends, that is not one of those restaurants. Um, say somebody's having a get together and it's a big group of people and we get invited out. The big thing to do is to call ahead or to look at their menu online and to see what their options are. If really the only vegan option is salad, I will eat before I go. Because contrary to popular belief, we don't just munch on lettuce all day. I'm a rabbit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we put lettuce in things. We have to, like, remind ourselves that dark greens are actually really good and to incorporate them in our diet. But a salad is not filling for me. A salad is not a meal. <laughs> and a lot of the times you even have to be careful about what dressing they're putting on it. You know, if there's bacon bits already in it, 
there's questions that you have to ask. So it's good to be prepared before you go out uh, with where you're going and what their options are. And again, another little sneaky vegan thing. Sometimes their french fries are in their own fry later, and sometimes they're put right in with um, like the meat and mozzarella sticks and stuff like that. Um, so that's another thing that we ask right off the bat, you know, are your fries cooked in a separate fry later or are they cooked in the same one as chicken? Because I really don't really don't want to mix those things in. So the first time we went to the Cape with my parents, we had no idea what was around locally that we could do. Um, obviously, most of the week we cooked our own food, but my parents loved to go out to eat. So we had to, oh my gosh, we looked through, I don't know how many flyers... Dozens of websites. Websites, calling <laughs> places to see what options were. We went to one place that made um, like a special meal for us. Oh, yeah, that's right. On a date night. Um, but now that we go consistently, we have found a place that we love. Oh, my goodness. It's called Karoo. Karoo. Karoo has so many options, including vegan options that are not salad. And they're listed in the menu. And they're listed in the menu, and they are color-coded for either vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just not. <laughs> so we found an app called Happy Cow. Um, it's an easy mobile app. So you type into search what you were looking for, and you can look for vegan, vegan-friendly, vegetarian-friendly. Um, I think that's it. I think that is it. In your nearby area, and it will pop up the different restaurants um, that fit that criteria. A friend of mine actually showed this to me. So she showed me this app, and we were able to do a search and find a place to eat that could suit both of us. Um, so that was really, really helpful. So now when we travel, we know that we have that. And everywhere we go, we tend to find that one place that we love to go to. We hit Karoo every single time we go to the every Cape now. Time. Every time. We love how simple it is that we can walk in and say, I would like this option because it's vegan. So that is when we go out. When we vacation also the rest of the week, when we're not dining out, we like to cook in wherever we're staying. So we grocery shop locally and then prepare food. Last question. Last question. This was a really good question too. What are your staples? So every week we have a very similar grocery list and we always meal plan ahead of time so that we can plan our list accordingly. Everything that we eat as a week is pretty much a staple. I mean, we'll buy the big bulk things ahead of time like rice. Beans. Beans. Quinoa quinoa, different seeds um, that we sprinkle on everything, chia seeds and hemp seeds. Um, hemp seeds have more protein than chia. Yum. Yum. Every week it's fruit, apples and bananas apples are the big ones. Bananas. Apples and bananas. My son loves apples and peanut butter. This guy loves apples and peanut butter. We use bananas either raw or in smoothies. Smoothies. Fruit. Um, Talk about those. If berries are on sale, we'll grab berries, either as snacks or in the smoothies or both. Vegetables, onions, mushrooms, peppers are our favorites. We use them in a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, they each have something that's really good for you. The mushrooms, especially lately, is vitamin D. Vitamin D is really important, especially in the wintertime when there's not as much sunshine and you're not outside as much and the daylight is short. So we use mushrooms in a lot of stuff. Portobello are my my favorite. I like the little white ones. The little white ones. What, whichever ones. They so, freeze really well. <laughs> like me. <laughs> Shrooms, peppers, onions. We use in a lot of things. Um, we always get a bag of potatoes. You can just bake them. Like with the slow cooker, you let it sit all day. You can just bake them and then either make french fries out of them, have baked potatoes, make mashed potatoes. Save for leftovers. Rice. Home fries the next morning. You can do so much with potatoes. Indeed. So a lot of times, even if we're just making a few for one meal, we'll cook a bunch and then the next morning either have them for breakfast or use them for lunch. Um, so again, that helps with the I'm on a time crunch. Do things ahead of time in bulk. So whenever you can, I forgot to add that earlier, do things in bulk. You know, if you're doing potatoes one night, make extras for the next day and incorporate that in your meal planning. If you're making quinoa salad, make enough to last for two days of lunch. Things like that. So nuts, we use a ton of cashews. Grains, you know, we already mentioned quinoa. Rice. Rice. Um, we do pasta. Oats. 
Oats are really good. Oats, old-fashioned oats. We make overnight oats. We use them in different recipes. Oats are awesome. Fruit, veg, nuts, grains, seeds. And those are our staples every single week. And then we'll add in things like if we're having baked tofu, we'll add tofu. This week we're doing tempeh. Hummus is a good one too. Mm -hmm. High in protein. Good fats. Um, really delicious. Really delicious. Really easy, easy to make. Snack. It's mm. not too expensive if you buy it. Some of them are actually lower in sodium. And they're really delicious. So you can either dip vegetables in them or crackers. Tons of uses for Use it as a spread. Yes, use it as a spread. Um, avocados, we are using more and more for either spreads or I'm going to start putting them in salads and things like that because they are loaded with good things for you. Those are basically our staples. I know it sounds like a long list, but even with variety, we tend to use a lot of the same things. It's just a matter of how you pair them and what seasonings you use and different spices and things like that. On the note of seasonings and spices, um, get to know them. Get as much as you can. Um, if you're local to New England, Market Basket has a whole variety of this one brand that are like 99 cents a container. You can't go wrong with that. Load up and experiment. You know, it's like smell it, smell whatever you're cooking. Yeah, I think these will work together. Try it. So you don't have to stick to salads. You don't have to stick to no. soup. There are a ton of different things out there that you can try for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we're going to go ahead and post some of our favorites in the description below. So those were all the questions from this weekend. If you have any more, go ahead and post them in the comments below. And we would be happy to write them down for next week's Q&A. So have a great week and we will see you soon. on certain like go-to meals. Jesse also makes a cashew cheese, um, like a creamy, I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> like a thingy thingy with the thing and the thing. And I expect you to know what I mean because the thing is with the thing. <laughs> that thing over there in the place with the person. Mm-hmm. And the stuff. <laughs> so. Mono unsaturated fluka buka buka buka. Dum 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 dum. <laughs> Say something. Say something. <laughs> <coughs> I have more bloopers than content by the time we're That's done. That's fine. This. Okay. You use thing. You use staples to hold things to the wall. <laughs> Nuts. No, I'm on bananas still. Oh, still bananas. I'm bananas. You miss the sun. We have more snow today. Again. Again. I think we forgot how it's spring. In April. Yeah. <laughs> winter was missed. It decided to be a mild winter, so it needs to just move on and accept the fact that it missed its chance. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> um, I think it's tempe. Tempe? Tempe. Tempe. It's like bokeh. Bokeh. Boca. Tempe. Tem tempe. <laughs> I don't know. Is it helicopter? Is there anything you would like to add? Um, well, on this thing, on that, blah, 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 blah. the first rule of vegan Facebook, don't talk about vegan Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Except for publicly on YouTube. <laughs> because we're cool like that. <laughs>